Hi, I'm Peter Halloran, principal at Paxson Elementary School. Welcome to our school. Come on in. Hi everyone, I'm Joel Baird, the General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television, inviting you to a look at improvements at Paxson School. I'm here with the principal, Peter Halloran. Peter, thanks so much for taking the time to thanks talk for, about it. Thanks for coming to our school this morning. Yeah, you know it. So, um, people know that a bond had passed uh, some, some time ago now, yeah. and some of the fruits of that bond, which was dedicated to improving the uh, schools in the district, well, they're here, and yeah. Paxson School is one of the recipients of the upgrades, so could you tell people a little bit about what those upgrades are? Uh, one of the things that I am very excited about and proud of is the bond allowed the school to become a safer place for kids to go to school. We feel really, really good about that, and I think our, our, our parents and our community do as well. The hallways are much wider than they are in the other parts of the building, and what that allows us to do is if you walk here on a regular morning or a regular afternoon, you'll see probably four to six parent volunteers and paras working with students and flexible grouping out in the hallways. And it's, it's public, it's open, it's not, well, let's find a little room for them to go where they, where they have the space. It feels like it's very much just part of everything we do here. It seems, you know, it's a small thing, but there's a lot of space and um, nice, beautiful white walls where we demonstrate um, a lot of art as we walk down the first grade wing, you'll see cork strips, which makes it really easier for teachers to just hang up um, whatever the students have been working on and yeah. constantly rotate it. I love these light fixtures. They really do feel like natural light, and it's just a great space for students to work and learn, and um, it's a great place for a reading group. You'll see a table under um, under one of them here, and that's that's very much intentional. This, yeah. If you sit down and read here, it feels like you're in a brightly lit public library almost. Well, and you'll notice with every single one of these tables, they're, they're designed to be able to go with each other. Yeah. So I could take this table and that oh, table there, an and suddenly I have a nice hexagon table if I want, to, yeah. want it to be a bigger group. We have rocking chairs for students who kind of need some kinesthetic movement to help them focus. We have tables that are very easy to move around to cluster so you could work by yourself, work in a group. One thing we were able to add with the project is an office for our family resource specialists. And um, it's, I love that, that it's wide open um, because the family resource specialist, we want people to know that she's there. A lot of students come down and um, do tutoring with her during lunchtime. This is one of the, our kind of our workstation tables. Sometimes if students who are working in the iPads if they need a place to go, if they're listening to a book you know, on Tumble Books or a, some kind of software where they're listening to something, or if they're doing um, Read Write for Google or speech to text where they're saying something that they want to get typed out, if you right. go where there's a lot of ambient sound, it kind of picks yeah. up everything. Come out here, they can stand and work on it. This is one of the brand new classrooms. Like I said, these are the amoeba-like tables. You'll see sometimes they're by themselves, so this, this kiddo likes to work by himself with free of distraction. Or you could put them in groups of two, three, four, five. Um, it's just really, really flexible. Just even the screens, the new interactive panels. You'll notice this isn't adult height. Yeah. It's, it's student height so that for a first grader can come in here and do a math problem where they're writing it on the board or moving around some manip manipulatives. Oh. Yeah, so we call these our cubbies. They're the equivalent of, you know, a locker, but instead of having them in the hallway, they're in the classroom and that was an intentional decision made. That would be the bell telling kids it's time to go out to recess. Right. Uh, so but the kids aren't trip. here, they're on a field trip. But one of the things that's nice is if they need to run, get their agenda or if they need to get something out, their boots that they brought before sure. going to recess, we don't all need to go in the hall or send one kid out in the hall. It's right here in the classroom. So really that the hallway is as much a workspace. It's like an extension of the classroom. It's not kids, you know, yeah. going to put on some boots and they might decide, I'm gonna spend a couple extra minutes at, while I'm out oh, here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things we decided to get were just a ton of movable whiteboards. And so that when they are doing some learning out here in the collaboration space right now, you can tell they're doing some learning on photosynthesis. Yeah. If you wanna take a group of students out who needs to hear it one more time, or you just wanna explain it one more time, 
Um, we can move these in and out of classrooms. We sometimes use them as partitions. So if you want to have a, a small group who might be doing some testing, for instance, you can just put two or three around that group of students and now it's, it's essentially a classroom. This area is a breakout space for, that's primarily used for our, um, our resource program. So students who get extra help in reading and math or whatever it is. Our resource before this project, our resource space was on the second floor on the opposite side of the building. And so if a student needed to go do 20 minutes of extra reading or 20 minutes of math, they had a long walk to get there. They're losing instructional minutes. First graders get distracted walking up multiple, oh, <laughs> multiple stairs and going down the hall. And so now this space was designed not just for first grade, but for second grade so that the teacher can come to them. And so the student just comes across the hallway. We got some standing desks. Um, these can be used. These can go up and down quite easily. So sometimes the teacher uses it as a podium if they're doing oh, some sure. kind of demonstration. Or if a student has the wiggles, you can right. lower it a little bit and the student can work at the standing desk. Nice. Um, we've also found these are incredibly helpful for, um, for all abilities. You'll see an adaptive swing on the playground, um, which is, yeah, we have it there because we have some all ability st students, but anyone can use it. And so the, whether it's the standing desks or the adaptive swings, whether it's the resource room that's used for not just kids who need extra yeah. help, we make these spaces just things everyone does, and so kids wouldn't even know the difference. And I love these tall ceilings. I don't know if you ever see those, but um, the contrast between the black and white, I think it's cool, but also just the openness. Yeah. The parents, the community, the grandparents, the helpers, there is a sense of investment here. And um, whether, it's, whether it's in the physical building of the school, there's a sense of investment whether it's in the playground and making sure it's everything that our students need, there's a sense of investment from the community, whether it's safety. Uh, there's just a sense of investment that the parent community, the Paxson community has in Paxson, but I think you can see that as almost a microcosm for what Missoula County Public Schools is and represents and Missoula represents.